these calls on the bevy platform and, and and a lot of times we kind of run into the idea of like well how can i make this engage with my audience how can it talk to the people that i'm talking to so my response to that is put them into the content so these are literally um some of the sessions that we had at cmx summit um which were great by the way and what i thought was really cool was i'm um, just having the opportunity to kind of show people in this light um and also repurpose these into things such as our uh cmx weekly um, a couple of the blog articles in addition to using them on the social media platforms um and i and i just felt it was just one of the things i was really proud of um, when blake reached out about this it was kind of exciting because you know there wasn't really too many opportunities to share all the cool gifts you make behind the scenes so i, th I thought that was an awesome opportunity um, let me take this and those are my gifts All right, man, that's that's awesome. I mean, it's it's simple. Um, and just like you're getting everyone involved through the content. Oftentimes it's like the content feels like the megaphone, which we usually talk about, whine about. It's like where everything you're just like shouting out at people, but I love it where you flip it and it's like engaging. It's like that two way. So that's that's brilliant. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Round of applause, hit those like applause, clap emojis, things like that. Or you just like raise like way on up there if you really like it on a 10 like where your hands are off the screen so Woo. and then up next we've got like my teammate naomi so we did a really fun thing and i'll let uh, naomi take it away cool thanks hi everyone i'm naomi i'm uh, the marketing manager of audience development here at dzone um and i will be sharing a cool new feature one second get it up can everyone see this? I, I can't see you, so someone say yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So um, we uh, have been trying to incorporate the uh, contributor and community experience into our newsletters that we send um, daily and weekly. Um, so one of the things that we uh, started doing a couple weeks ago, this is uh, the third week that we've done it. So this brand new feature in our weekly digest um, called the Contributor Spotlight, and it's right here. And I'll scroll down so we can just kind of highlight it right here. So um, basically every week we're going to be featuring uh, a contributor of the week. Um, this little blurb in the weekly uh, newsletter uh, just has, you know, their picture, their name, how many articles they've published, uh, how many page views they've had, a little blurb about them. Um, and it also links to their profile on DZone, which lists out all of their um, articles that our users can easily um, access. Um, so this also coincides with Blake's social media efforts. Um, so they're getting a lot of different posts on, all in the same day uh, where they're getting tagged and they can you know, share, reply. Other community members um, can comment and congratulate them. Um, so yeah, we're really trying to incorporate uh, community into our newsletters, and uh, this is kind of our first step into it. So we're excited to see, uh, you know, how engagements perform and and if the contributors really like this, and hopefully it, it incentivizes them to uh, to write some more. All right, that, that's really great. I like, you know, so many newsletters. It's all like company stuff. So it's like like what we saw with ronald other people it's like where you can if you're a community member like let me see myself or like people like me in that content you produce and newsletters you can often like uh could be a blind spot things like that so it's been great to to work with nomi on that and we also package it up for our, our account team so they can see it share out back with the uh, companies things like that so internal communications is is just as critical so if you're out there in Fiji, like doing all this great stuff, you still got to like tell people internally that you're as cool as their Naomi. So definitely helps out. So thank, thanks for that, uh, Naomi. Up next, a uh, really exciting effort, uh, the Community Leadership Institute. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to check it out. Um, definitely should put a link to that into the chat, but we've got none, on the, none other than R.D. Whitney here with us to present. Great, thank you. Okay. When you can see my screen, just say you can, somebody. We can see your screen. Great, great. So I'm gonna go through this really quickly, um, but uh, just a little bit of show and tell about this. Um, so, um, you know, COVID was obviously horrible from a lot of fronts, but a lot of great things came out of it. It was it was clearly a slingshot for the community model. Um, 
which has always has been there for quite a long time and, and growing, but just really uh, race forward. It was also a good year to get braces. Um, but when I've been building community over the past three years, I've been kind of thinking about it with pillars. These are all sort of pillars of community that oftentimes give it sustainability or, or formats or methods that can that can create a community. And uh, my theory is it, it, that, you know, I've been playing when I've been building communities is if you can bring two or three of these together, I get to bring my daughters to Old Faithful back when they were younger. And, and I learned that water plumbing and heat kind of at the same time come together to make uh, Old Faithful go up consistently. And if you can do that in, in with a couple of these pillars, you can make that happen. So just, I've built uh, lots of uh, institutes, niche professional institutes in my career. I built the Institute of Finance and Management, which if you're in the accounts payable or accounts receivable function, this is your home. This is your niche home and the riches are in the niches. So this is uh, 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 one example. I, I did it in, in the $3.7 trillion healthcare spend of which half of it's bought by employers. And we created a validation service for the vendor side and a certification program uh, for education for the buy side and it became a thriving community. My last example, um, I've been uh, involved in virtual events since 20, uh, 2007. Um, I used to be CEO of something called the Trade Show News Network. So I came at it from the event space, but they were clearly clunky and, and uh, kind of a little bit silly at the time. They were kind of modeled after Second Life and they were frustrating people. But we did a re uh, research study here back in 2010, uh, 2010, and we found out exactly what we just found out after a year and a half of COVID is they don't replace for uh, live in real life experience. Um, and I say in real life experience because it is, you know, that it, we're face to face right now. And um, it, and like so many things have changed because of this. But but we did find out that it extends the, the a community. So the, the idea is the year round community and then some people coming struggling. But we we I've been involved in virtual events, you know, since that time. And and um, I got on a webinar 20 uh, March, uh, April of 2020. I decided I was going to go out on my own after 30 years of working for companies. And uh, I got on a webinar about the monetization of webinars and 15,000 people from around the world came on because there was a desperate need to learn about how to do virtual events. So me and three other colleagues created the Virtual Events Institute and it's trained over 2,000 people around the world, including former markets, Hyatt hotels and corporations, nonprofits around the world. But it's becoming a community. It's now got an awards program and a membership. And it's my fourth example. So. We talk about all different forms of community and there's a convergence happening and because of COVID of, of associations, nonprofits, corporations, of course, SaaS companies, which have been doing it for a very long time, but media and event companies um, converging. But the other thing that's happening is marketing is shifting clearly towards the community model. And then TechCrunch came out with this headline in February, which to me just kind of set it off that the chief community officer is the new CMO. Community is the new form of marketing. Harvard Business Review then came out around the same time, talked about the direct community type of model. So I just sketched this out really quickly, you know, kind of the chaos of social media coming from, uh, you know, Mad Men days and um, Madison Avenue to to uh, one to one marketing to chaos of social media marketing to a little bit of structure with inbound marketing to what is today moving towards the community model. And so I borrowed a, uh, an idea from my friend Kramer, who had the coffee table book of coffee tables. And we said, um, what if we actually could put all these tools and resources and templates into one place where people could grab it and help uh, share and help advance the profession, which is happening. There is a profession for community happening here. Um, and um, we launched the Community Leaders Institute about five, six weeks ago. We now have 1,080 members. It is chock full of resources, tools. Um, we're doing an event in Memphis. Uh, we've got all the thought leaders um, uh, that... Uh, You'd imagine, and there's our friend David Spinks as well, um, but we have the co-founder of LinkedIn. A lot of these uh, faces are familiar. We're going to have a really rich program here. Um, but um, the, the site itself is chock full of resources. The Community Builders Playbook is in there. Um, all kinds of um, uh, really helpful tools. Uh, here's an example for a request for proposal when you're selecting your platform. Some of this you might be able to use in your own work. Uh, uh, ways to grow your audience a lot, and so the and and then we're launching a, an international magazine. Um, Richard's on the first cover. We've got some exciting issues to come, but it's full of thought leadership. Um, and um, we hope everybody joins. It's uh, communityleadersinstitute.com, and it's all free. Uh, and uh, we we hope we're advancing the profession. Thanks for listening. All right. Thanks for that. Hey, so. Link is in the chat, like throw out the applause if you like it or just like way on up here if you like just do the roof where you can spin, you know, if you really like it. So 
definitely won't do that again because I almost felt, but all right. So huge thanks to RD for that link in the chat. Um, really great to, to see that. So a lot of content, a lot of frameworks. That's a lot of exciting stuff just to wherever you are in the spectrum to, to get you going or just to help you out. So very up next, we've got Gabrielle coming up to the stage to present uh, show and tell with their community content. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, having me. I'm the community manager at a place called Bramble. We are a SaaS video platform for gatherings and persistent offices, stuff like that. Um, and we're, you know, less than a year old or just a year old. So um, in the early days, I was trying to figure out a piece of content to make to convey the sort of community aspect of Bramble. And it's definitely really challenging because filming virtual events is can be really static and not interesting. And um, so the video I'm going to show, it's two minutes. It was my attempt to convey that and um, knowing that the, the platform was in its early stage and there were tech issues and stuff like that. But this is kind of the result. So um, I thought it would be interesting to look back on that. So I'm going to share my screen. We can see it. Okay. Just relax. Close your eyes if you feel like it. Listen to the sounds. This song right here, I think, just gonna catch on. A lot of folks don't want to know more about this because it definitely has its uh, its sense of cyber community. So, like, getting the opportunity to share my little community with everyone is like so cool, and it makes me so happy that people came out to see it. And it just reminds me that like all of our our communities are like you know so resilient, and they all care for each other. It's all interactive, man. It's yeah. Like Hanging out at the little bar, watching the <laughs> There was even people being shy, doing the usual high for high something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Hey, wow. Did, did, if you enjoyed that dance, please can we get a wiggle in the in the crowd? Okay, ready? I'm gonna go down. Let's go down the soul train together. Annabelle, you and me, we're going down the soul train. Ready? Yes. Um, I had a good time. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to do this. Uh, I don't know what was going to happen. I'm tripping. Thank you, Bramble. Thank you, everybody, for enjoying this craziness. Bramble, I'm going to bump this Bramble. I'm going to bump this Bramble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could do this all day, folks. Um. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, so that was an attempt to kind of communicate um, community through things. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a very early video that I put out to try and get people excited about it. Wow, that's like, you just like blowing the roof off our thing. That's that's definitely one of the favorite things I've seen in a while. Love how you get the community involved in that. That's just, that's what it's about, right? That is that is community content, like uncut, unfiltered, 100%, like 24 karat community 
magic in the house on RCMX Connect. So Gabrielle, that's that's the inspiration we needed. Not that everyone else wasn't amazing. That was just I love the love seeing all the community members. That's just hits hits all of us right in our hearts as professionals. So that was amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, very exciting. And be sure to throw the applause in the in the chat. Those little clap emojis. Uh, throw those in there. And then our, our, our last but not least, uh, we've got uh, Jenny Ann. We're also doing a in-person meetup in LA on Wednesday, October 13th, where we're at the Grand Central Market, which if you take like the 405 to the 5 to the 3 over to left street back to Staples Center, you can get there and the karaoke party afterwards. But without further ado, one of the best community consultants, Jenny, take the stage. Hey everyone, I've got three examples to share with you today. I'm taking a little bit of a different spin. I'm not showing you things I've created, but I'm showing you content I've come across that you that are kind of community no-nos, what you do not want to do. Uh, but so my three examples, uh, we'll try to get through these quickly and then I'll put the link in the chat so you all have access to this deck if you wanna re-reference them. My first two examples have to do with the welcome email, a very critical piece of communication when someone has just joined a community, right? And what you see right here is my welcome email after I joined, I was doing research. Uh, so this is a community called Hearing Journey, and it's for people who have hearing um, disabilities or medical issues and are looking for other people to share their story, get support, and possibly even look for certain devices, uh, medical devices that might assist them. So this was the first email that came from Hearing Journey. And this is not the, the part that is the no-no exactly, because um, I, what I want to do is contrast this with the next email. This is a nice welcome email. This is, you know, inviting me to come connect with other people. This is telling me there's a live chat every Thursday. So it's letting me know about some events happening. And um, even though I blocked out the person's name who's on here, uh, they I would have liked to have seen it come from a personal email and not just like a general one. But still, for the most part, this is just a nice, simple um, and um, and brief welcoming email. Compare that to what I received two days later, which is the no-no. This is a straight up sales pitch. And there is no mention of the community in here anywhere. So I, I saw this and just let no, 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 no. Now, is there a time for an email like this? I think, I think absolutely there is and could be valuable to members of a community like Hearing Journey. But two days later, and this is the next communication I receive, does it make me super interested if I've come to support, come for support to this community, if I've come to connect with other people going through what I'm going through? However, if I'm coming to strictly learn about the devices, uh, then um, then that's probably, you know, really touching on what I need. Uh, but a lot of the community stats that I've shown it, is that people find this research another way. If they're coming to a community, they're usually coming for different purposes. All right, that was example number one. Moving into example number two, it's a community called CBG Nation. Um, they have an app that you can join where uh, they bring together people who are into fitness and workouts and just uh, positivity uh, and self-love. They also give away a free pair of their company leggings every single day. So there's that chance to earn that on their community. But what's the no-no? This is their welcome email. Just this. That's all. And um, so where is my, you know, nice, warm welcome from the community manager? Because there, there was literally no name, no sign off. Sincerely, this person, so it was just this text. Um, so where's my welcome? Where is a reminder about the benefits I'm going to get out of this community? Uh, where is a link to maybe a popular place on the community where I can start diving into conversations? Where is another link that can tell me how I can get started on community? Where is that? Not seeing it. Oh, and you got to love the end where they're asking you to leave a review for them in the App Store, even though you just joined their community. This is literally the first communication. So not so great timing, I think, on making that request. All right, so that's two examples down, one more to go. And the last one has to do with, let's call it moderation efforts. And 
Uh, so in this one, again, this is not the no-no just yet, but hopefully we all have heard of the wonderful HubSpot community. They do so many things right. And I was really, really jazzed to find that as I was going through trainings on HubSpot, they have found ways to integrate the community into their training modules. And this is a screenshot example of that. I finished one video module. My next step was to jump into the community and look at this particular group and look at the conversation there. I was so happy to see this. I tweeted about it. I was like, yes, talk about integrating the community experience into other aspects of client touch points, right? Then I digged a little bit deeper. Let me see if I can hop over to, okay, hopefully you all can still see. Uh, I digged into one of those links that was from there. And, you know, I found a question that was posed that it, it meant to get responses, right? However, all of the responses are the same pretty much. And it's not valuable for me to be reading through these things where some of them actually don't even make sense. So I take this as an example of a poor moderation effort. And what I would love to see HubSpot do in a case like this is have an, uh, either the inbound professor there, Kyle, or a moderator jump in after a couple of replies and say, all right, we've heard that LinkedIn is an example. We've heard that email, maybe even WhatsApp are good. You know, besides those examples, what else do you have out there? So the moderator is kind of tying up the conversation. It's a voice of authority and inviting people to keep commenting if they have other um, tools to share besides those. Because just scrolling through these, this doesn't make me want to engage in the conversation. This doesn't make me want to scroll a lot down the page and see what people have said. I get the gist of this in just a few minutes, and it's not worth my time to engage. So uh, we'd love to see them pick up moderation effort there. But then again, they're probably so busy doing all the other fabulous things that they do. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. If you do want to see content that I've created, just go to my website, jenny.community, and you'll find a lot of it there. Thank you. Oh, and I'll put this this link in the chat. Awesome. Virtual clap emojis or raise the roof. You can still do it even if we can't see you. So definitely good, good for that stuff there. So lots of great examples. Uh, we got the link in the chat from, from Jenny. If anyone has anything they also want to show, we can get you up to state. Otherwise, we can we can start our question and answer. Um, portion of things. So drop a question into the chat. We'll be glad to answer your questions or let us know if you want to come up on stage. Okay, so the we'll we'll do with the first question, but let me just make sure uh, get this just right. Yeah, my hair. I should have blown right. All right. So Laura, if you're part of a company with a ton of practical uh, this is so tough to read straight. Practical tips, content on their corporate blog. How do you think about creating a content strategy for the community that is different, but still valuable for your customers, community members, and outside of your of community updates or activities? And looking for tips and content. So whoever wants to take that. I'd say my first question is, Lauren, have you talked to your community members yet? <laughs> have you asked them what they want to see? What is missing? What is the reason they're not coming back? What, so, um, you know, I would ask a couple of questions like that. So hold a few interviews and get a feel for the kind of content people are looking for. Um, and then if all they're looking for are those practical tips and content, figure out maybe some unique ways to present that. Um, maybe in the form of like a, a bingo game or um, using video or webinar tools besides using text, uh, maybe like short form audio advice, like through racket.com. Uh, any other advice from my colleagues on the panel? Yeah, I, I think that a lot of times, especially in the professional areas, people want to know that there's a library behind them of resources and, and just the fact that they knowing, knowing that it's there is, is enough of a value and, you know, in, in you know, and, and, just just reinforcing the tools and resources that you do have there, I think, can be really helpful and making them easy to find. All right, perfect. And then Ilker says, Jenny Weagle loved your what not to do list. If you expand it to a blog post or a book, you'll get me as an avid reader. So there you go. So there's some tips for your content. 
Thanks. I might consider that as some content, but I also feel like I might get some angry community professionals at me as well. So but I'll, think, I'll think about how to do that. That's... Just be sure to tag HubSpot when you start to promote it. <laughs> and then uh, someone asked, asked you also, Junie, what was the video solution you mentioned that started with an R? Racket.com. Uh, short form audio clips. You can only do them up to nine minutes and, uh, but you can invite other people into an audio conversation with you. And I've been playing around with it. It's pretty cool uh, and neat. And I would love to see a tool like this integrated into community platforms one day. I mean, can you imagine instead of getting an email or a direct message from a community manager welcoming you, if there was like a quick one to two minute like voice clip of that person saying welcome, what a personal touch. And that would, I think that would go a long way. Yeah, and there's also like a really interesting tool too that we were talking about like in CMX Slack, where it has like, it's like a whole like tree series of videos. So it's like an interactive. And so you can go down like that whole, I forget the name of it, it starts with the T. The, the community tree or something else? No, it started with a T. It was oh, like, okay. I yeah, it's in the, the software, but it's like, you could have like an interactive video and then it trees out branches. And so, like, if you're, like, a certain type of user wanted to learn more about a certain thing, yeah, so it kind of goes away. Almost like a YouTube playlist where you just go to, you start watching one video, and then it's, like, three hours later, you're yeah, watching Doobie Brothers videos or something. I um, think I can tell you the name. Hold on. Um, well, Tolstoy or something like that? Yes, something like that, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Any other questions for our, for our panel today? Ilker says Doobie, yes, Doobie Brothers, yes. Uh, oh, Hayata, our person asked, what do you think of communities that are tied to company revenue goals? Yeah, and I think this this goes back to sort of it being the future of marketing. And, and I think communities are powerful marketing vehicles that can bring in leads and prospects and and serve customers. So um, I think it, then it's a matter of, of creating reliable metrics that um, – you can communicate to management uh, so that they see this as a worthy investment, which they absolutely should. One once, twice. All right, and then we've got a question from one of the coolest people on planet Earth, Jeffrey Rowe out of Florida, where somebody captured an alligator today in a trash can bin. So that was kind of amazing, although they probably don't recommend it. Uh, ask what kind of content pillars do you think are essential to launching a new community? And where do you draw the line in the sand between gated content, meaning they have to like register or sign in with some type of login to get it versus like ungated where it's like free and open? Hmm. I'll just say about that, like, I really am a believer in video content. I just think it gets a lot of engagement and you can do a lot of interesting stuff with it. So I kind of make it as public as I can, um, but I uh, I try and do a lot with visuals in that way. Um, yeah. A lot of times it comes down to like, a lot of times somebody says like, what platform should I use to start my community? And that's just the wrong discussion to start with is like getting really you know, into a phase of discovery and thinking, what do I have? To, what is the problem I'm trying to solve? What do I have to work with as assets to solve that? And then, and then delivering the minimal viable community from from that vantage point is, you know, that that that's really what it's all about. It, you know, so all those pillars, um, you know, they it, it could be different depending on the circumstances. And I'll just say, like for me like the, the sort of the rhyme and the reason for a lot of the communities, it's like, what are the main content pillars and what are the main personas? So even though it's like, you definitely want a diverse community, it's not for everybody on planet earth, right? So if you've got like all telescope people in your community, but you're a shoot and it kind of, there can be like a huge like disconnect. And it's like Seth Godin is when your community starts to go across that Hudson, you don't want to be like halfway over and suddenly people are going, wait a minute, I thought we were going, Right. And so for a lot of the for a lot of the community efforts and content, it's to narrow the focus of what we're doing. Right. So where some communities may have 100 different blogs and you're like, I can't wait till we get to next year and there's going to be 200 more. It's like, no, no, no. Let's really focus into what are our main 
content pillars and our main audiences. Let's really focus on them, over the, over overserve them, and over deliver. And I liked when Magic Johnson was talking about taking over Starbucks. He was really dialed into this local audience. Do they want to eat? What do they like? And let's throw out everything else. And I think the same way with community content is this a match for key audiences, personas, and members? If not, like, why are we doing it? But I would also say you still need like your aha, fun, amazing type of stuff, you, you know, fun and engaging where you just sort of like break it up every now and then. you just get a little bit doing the same thing. So with everything, you definitely need like once a quarter or some frequency to have some other ways to like hit your audience, whether that's aha or just some type of fun and engaging stuff. And it won't always like ladder into like what you're doing, even like in Turkey, Ilker, like the whole nation has like a battle of company band, which doesn't make any sense, but people were like bonding with their teammates. Ilker formed one with like a Doobie Brothers cover band um, doing stuff out. So it's like, so there's all different types of amazing things you can do in building that shared identity, shared rituals. And Ilker, um, let's see, let's go to Hanush. He says, how do you welcome a new community member so that they start to feel inclusive at the earliest stage of their journey? This is a really specific example, but it is just kind of indicative of like the larger point of it, which is uh, we have in Bramble, when people come in for the first time to a space, a bot that welcomes them. It's, it's one of our team members, it's pre-recorded, and she's like, hi, I'm, I'm Natasha, this is how you use Bramble. And we did an event, um, or uh, with some of our clients using the space, they're like an arts organization here in Toronto, and they were doing a deaf bramble. That's what they called it, and it was um, for the deaf community. And they said they were like, when people arrive, they had no idea, like they were really confused because um, they couldn't understand like what the bot was saying or whatever. And so we got an ASL um, interpreter and we added like a signing um, bot as well. So just, I think just really thinking outside of like how you learn or how you um, interact with things and being very open to being nimble and kind of um, changing things up when you um, get some sort of feedback like that. Very answers for that. Tell them anything right when they join the community. <laughs> just, just welcome, guide them. Imagine they've just arrived at your party that you're hosting and they need to meet other people. They need to know where the bathroom is. They need to know where the food and drinks are. You know, guide them, provide some links to show them around. Yeah, some great tips from Gabrielle and Jenny. And then Ilker uh, says the hot potato in our industry, community-led companies, leaving native community-led companies aside, can you cite a traditional company that has successfully turned to being community-led? If so, any quick indicators to spot? I jump on this one. I mean, I think it's happening all around the country now in droves because of the pandemic. Um, just one example, uh, I'm friends with someone here in New Hampshire that owns a sit-stand data company that is controlled by your cell phone. Long story short, it's called Stand Data. And, and it turns out that the health benefit isn't from standing or sitting, it's from transitioning. So this like a Fitbit measures your, your transitions and, and uh, the health benefits were validated. But anyway, nobody's buying office furniture right now, right? So he needed to quickly transition during pandemic to um, well, a lot of people working from home. And we don't know what the hybrid work environment's going to look like, but it looks like it's going to involve a lot of people working from home and maybe some in the office now. Big, big change. So we stood up a, just a real quick community because he really wanted to uh, own that hybrid work um, topic. So we started getting um, thought leaders around that and contributing content, you know, senior HR and um, ergonomics folks from in and just built a community around that. Now it's coming out with a definitive guide of hybrid work. So it's literally transitioning the company. Um, so I think that's happening all over the place. It's really great. Anybody else want to, was that Jenny? Yeah, I've got two examples to share with you. One's a B2B, one's a B2C. Uh, 
a uh, company, Venify, which is led by Holly Firestone and her community team. Uh, to my knowledge, when she joined there, they did not have a community. In fact, they just launched it actually a few days ago. Uh, and not only did you know she come on and create this and, and launch this community with her team, but the it was clear that leadership recognized her efforts and promoted her, and she's now like VP of community. So I think that sends a message that they are looking to be more community led. I don't know anyone there. I don't even know Holly personally. I've just heard her interview on Masters of Community like twice because I was so inspired by it. So that's something that comes to mind. And then a former client of mine, Athleta, you know, a very long-standing successful retail store. They just launched a community in July called Athleta Well, which they are now working to integrate into their rewards program. They've got lots of plans for for doing more with the community. So I'm seeing them start to think more community-led and trying to figure out how can we change this company culture to make it more community centric. And so far they're having a lot of success with their community. Excellent. And then to jump into the last question, I'll throw like one in terms of like, like give like one tip to everybody out there or maybe two tips on something like after this that they should go do. I'll just kick it off and just say like, after this uh, event today, just when you go back, maybe it's one, um, is like, think about like your audiences, community members that you're trying to reach today, and then juxtapose that with the content that you're putting out and at the different stages, right? Is it really like, you know, so again, so many companies I see like, they could have all their audience in Italy or India or other places, but everything has like a North American feel like the photography, creative. So just go through and just sort of like think about that. Like if you are those different types of community members, how would you feel? What would that experience look like? And then secondly, with the diversity of your community, do you have like like someone like in a smaller per percentage of your community, say like in Japan or a different area, city, local, or maybe in a different topic and has their story been told? And if that story hasn't been told, that's a great opportunity for you to go out there and think, how am I going to capture this person's story to be reflective of the people here? That could be getting them onto a fireside chat, onto a video, but think about somebody that may not have really been, been seen in your content before and just take it as an action item to go out to a one-on-one -on -one with them and look for some ways to tell their story. And then we'll just go around the panel here if anyone has some quick tips also that you want to leave people with. I want to echo what Blake said, go talk to your community members. When was the last time you talked and listened and heard a story about what they're experiencing or learning on your community? So make a plan to call up one of them, email one of them by the end of this week. And Gabrielle, anything? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm in the middle of launching our community for Bramble. So um, it's a bit fresh on my mind because it can be kind of overwhelming and um, I heard someone say recently, community starts with creating just one connection when you're feeling overwhelmed. So I've been, I find that really helps to um, bring it back to a, a place that feels easier to begin from. So that's what I would say. And then RD. I, I remember once I, I flew to Las Vegas from Boston for a lunch meeting. Um, and I got home late, didn't have dinner with my children, and then the carbon footprint was horrible. That will never happen again after COVID. Uh, things, the world has changed, and this is the time to be nimble and to reinvent yourself. And the community model is a direction for corporations to move in. This is a profession in development at hyperspeed, so jump on. And then, Ronald, anything from you? Yeah, the piece of advice I would give was um, try your best not to do content alone. You know, there's often times when I think we think we automatically know what's best for the community. And at the end of the day, you kind of go back and, and look at the results and it didn't hit as effective as you thought it would. And that's the moment when you kind of have to question, you know, did I did I do this for me? Was this for them? So just incorporating the community, keeping them involved in all the steps and, you know, giving them an opportunity to shine as well. Um, you know, if you're making blog posts, I'm sure you have writers. If you or doing social media, you might have some influencers in your own backyard. So, you know, don't overlook that stuff and, and make sure that they're part of the journey. And then Naomi, on your side, what do you think? What are some tips for? Yeah, um, so coming from a 
a revenue focused content uh, company like DZone, um, definitely finding that balance between sponsored content and, you know, uh, contributor content, um, make sure that, you know, your community members feel heard and that they're getting the exposure that they want and need. Um, yeah, just finding that balance. Right. And then great, great points by everybody. So thanks for sharing that. So hopefully that helps people out. And then Ilker has our last question with, you know, we're almost into Q4, hard to believe it. It's like, man, we're like, 2022 is pretty soon. There's going to be people putting up holiday lights and all that great stuff. Hard to believe it. But so already, what are some of the trends that you're, you're going to predict? What are tomorrow's headlines today for uh, what we're going to see in community in 2022? I'll kick it off and say in my crystal ball, I see that there will be a CMX summit in person in San Francisco, and that's my hot take. So feel free for anybody else getting some community trends for 2020. Incredible tech innovation. Look at the uh, valuations of the companies through COVID. Um, to hop in as one example, but this there is going to be phenomenal tech innovation coming out in the convergence between live and 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 online is is happening. I hope for a simplification of back end uh, platforms and tools for community managers to make their lives a little bit easier every day. All right. And then Gabriel, Ronald, any trends that you, you hope for or you think we'll see? Um, I'm just kind of interested to see, you know, that there have been such a so many new technologies coming out so quickly. Um, and I'm just curious to see what sticks and what doesn't and looking at a little deeper at why um, that is. So that's something I'm definitely interested in, especially with all the kind of like video tech, plat you know, video conferencing, stuff like that. One thing I hope to see with all the resources and things that are becoming more available is just more diversity within the industry and the space itself. All of the above. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like the amazing thing for me, just seeing uh, community professionals of all over the world, different cultures, different places, um, so life, different cities, I mean, it's just so amazing that it, just to be in a profession that's thriving with so many different types of professions, professionals, and then you just get so many different perspectives. So it's just an amazing time. And thanks to the work of the panel today and everybody that you're doing, it's making everybody's job that much easier because basically like the more great stuff we do, that means the companies out there are going to want us even more. And they're only going to want us even more. They're going to want to pay us even more. And then we're like really pushing it uh, forward. So there's ne never been a better time. And it's one of the most diverse industries out there are professionals and yeah just it's it's amazing to to, to be a part of that uh, so thank you for we'll do a quick like bow for, for the panel today i will thank everyone for attending